Thank you for being here. I want to welcome everyone. I want to welcome those of you who are watching this um, later. It's not a live event, but I do want to invite you to come and be a part. The scriptures admonish us to not forsake the gathering of ourselves together. And, and there's something that happens in a room when we come together and we hear the word of God and we're challenged by that and we get to walk it out. There's a part, and we may look at that a little bit more, but the doors are open here uh, well before 10 o'clock. You're welcome to come, have some uh, refreshments, and coffee with us. We start worship right at 1030 and, uh, and then dig into the word after that. So let's go before the Lord and let's give thanks for what we're about to hear. Amen. Father, we love you and we praise you. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for your anointing that rests upon us. The anointing of God that rests upon each and every one of us to hear your word, to receive your word, to declare your word. We thank you for that. We thank you for right now as we, we set everything aside. We set all of our preconceived ideas. We set our own thought processes aside. We bring captive our hearts and our minds to your word. We want to hear what you, the head of the church, has to say to us today. We want to hear what you want to do in us and through us. So we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Last week we spoke on the three baptisms. And if you missed it, I encourage you to go back. We didn't, we didn't spend a long time in that. And we didn't spend a long time in two of the three baptisms. And I, as I said, I wanted to pick back up in this first baptism that happens that I think a lot of us, because... It happens, a lot of us don't realize what happens, and then we neglect to walk in something that is taking place. And I think it's affecting the house, I mean, or not just this house, but the body of Christ. So if you would, go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to be in there a little bit. We're going to jump around to a few different scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to start in verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members. Now, a lot of us have looked at 1 Corinthians 12 and we like all the stuff when it comes to us doing things in the kingdom. We like that stuff. But you know what? We got a full plate here. This isn't just dessert. We got to look at the whole plate. All right. So where did I leave off? All right. Let's start again. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that body, all the member of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Verse 13. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greek, whether slave or free, we have all been made to drink into one spirit. The spirit of God, when we were born again, baptized us into the body of Christ. We became a part of something bigger than what we see with our eyes, what we often hear, what we often feel. And this, this understanding this goes so far beyond I think we've neglected as a church because we get defensive when people get in our business, okay? And so we like to think that, well, that only affects me. No, we are a part of a body, and it's called the body of Christ. And what I do affects other parts of the body of Christ. What I don't do affects other parts of the body of of Christ. That's why when you look through all of this here, you see things and, and, and you get excited about the things that you can do. Look at verse 27, if you will, same chapter, just look down real quick. Verse 27, now you are the body of Christ and members individually. If we are the body of Christ and members individually, how does that change our lives? How does it change our needs? How does it change? When we understand that the Spirit of God baptized us into the body of Christ 
And we are the temple of the living God. Do you realize that? You are the temple of the living God. Christ lives in you. The Spirit of God lives in you. Everything changes now. And, and because of that, we need to understand now when we go back, oh, I'm, 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 I get excited here. L let's take a look back. Let's, let's back up just a second. If you're now the temple of the living God, in your mind, real quick, what does God's word say in the Old Testament about his temple? There's a lot of neat things said in the word of God, in the Old Testament, about the temple of God. He told him how to build the temple. He gave clear outline of how to build this temple. We've all looked at the different, the, the, different uh, the, the, the holy of holies, the outer courts, the, the outside, then the outside and the gates. And, and we looked at all the different people that come in and out and who can go where and, and all that stuff. Now, if those are given to us for our learning and those are types and shadows of things to come, how does that help us in our understanding that now we are the temple of God? If God took so much concern and time and wrote down in the scripture details about a temple on the earth that here we are, 2,000, 3,000, wherever we're at, okay, we're a long ways from it. That physical temple has come and gone, right? Right? Come and gone. Some have come and gone. The tent, come, nobody knows. I, to my knowledge, I don't know where that tent is. You can send me an email if you know where it is. I just don't know where it is. I don't know that anybody knows where that tent is. The odds on that tent surviving all this time is kind of thin. But okay, if it did. If it's that important, and if he did preserve that physical tent this long for somebody to find, how important was that to God? So how important are you and I? Because he says he doesn't dwell in, in temple made with hands. He dwells in us. He dwells in us. See, when we begin to grasp what the word of God says about us being the temple, it has to begin to affect our decisions. It has to begin to affect the things we do, the places we go, the things we, we focus on. It has to or it's not changing our lives. Be being part of a bigger Something is what everybody wants to be anyway. Why do young people uh, join gangs? They want to be a part of a family. They want to feel accepted. They want to, they want to know their part. They, they, uh, they uh, what, do you, what do you call that? They, um, they, oh, what is that word I'm looking for? Uh, they try to place themselves. They try to find their place and prove their place in the gang or in that body, right? Well, 1 Corinthians 12 tells us a whole lot about the body and how it works together. Tells it in one place in here, it says that the foot cannot, no, the head cannot say to the foot, I have no need of you. Now, who's the head of the church? Jesus. Who's the head of the body? Jesus. So the head of the body, the head of the church, Jesus, will not and cannot say to the foot. Some of you ever felt like you were the foot in the body of Christ? Some of you felt like you were the foot? See, I, I know some of you are just a kidney. You say, what? What do you mean just a kidney? I don't know about you, but I don't want to go without a kidney. You see what I'm talking about? See, if you look in there, we're not going to dig all into what 1 Corinthians 12 talks about all the different parts of the body. But we often think that only the part that we see is the most important. We often think that the part, well, I'm not really seeing, so it doesn't matter. Well, what if your, what if your lungs felt that way? What if your lungs went, man, I got me surrounded by a bunch of ribs and... And, and, and uh, I must not be that important. So they quit working. Dude, we got a problem. We have a problem. See, we've got to understand we're a part of something bigger. And as we begin to see we're in the kingdom of God, we've been taken out of darkness and placed into the kingdom of God. Everything in our life changed. And the standard, the way we look at it, the way we interpret it, the way we allow it to change us needs to change. Go with me, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this out real quick. Acts chapter 2, um, Acts chapter 2, verse 42, if you will. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. 
And they continued steadfastly, here they go, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, that's the apostles' teaching, and in fellowship, and in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. These four things we're going we're gonna to hope to get to and look at a little more because this, this is what brings maturity to the body of Christ. This is, this is right on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people were born again. We had 120 receive the Holy Spirit. They had the evidence of speaking in tongues. You had all that going on. And 3,000, these people said, somebody stood up and said, what do you want us to do? What do we do? And Peter said, repent and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they did. And this is what happened later. Verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' teaching and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. I want you to write those things down. We're going to look at them because these things are important as we grow. How much of the word of God are we hearing? How much are we being taught and how much are we teaching? Our fellowship, two fellows in a ship. That's why there's two L's in fellowship. Fellowship. What does our fellowship look like? Our interaction, our fun and our good, our bad. What kind of fellowship do we have? Because if we don't have fellowship, we're not going to go good in our growing. That's why the scripture says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Breaking of bread, that's simply sharing a meal. It really is simply sharing food with one another. My pastor said it to me this way, eat spaghetti and you'll find out a lot about a person. Are you a slurper? My wife doesn't like to eat, eat spaghetti with me because I slurp. Yes, I slurp. And I often need a bib because I want lots of sauce and I want lots of meat. I do not like spaghetti that's runny and no meat. I want, I want more meat than sauce. And I don't even care if you put the noodles on the plate. Okay, the noodles are just extra. All right. But that's about, that's eating and breaking of bread and then prayer. How much prayer time do we do together? Do we pray together? Do we pray for one another? Do we? We're going to work on some of those things. This is just a, this is just a forewarning. I'm, I'm plowing up a little, a little thing in your heart. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We read it briefly last week. And again, I'll start with the good warm fillies to, to help you in this so you feel good about things. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11. In verse 11. And such were some of you. Remember that? Now, I heard some of you went back and saw what some of you were. It's okay. Let's do that for fun. Let's go back up to verse 9. Just for fun. I want to help you. Help you avoid. Verse 9, it went too far. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators nor adulterers nor, I mean, idolaters, nor adulterous, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor ri rivalers. Man, they got a lot of big words in here. Nor extortioners. I know none of you were that, right? None of you are guilty of any of those things. No, it just says, none of those will inherit the kingdom of God. And what does verse 11 say? And such were some of you. So somewhere in verses 9 through 10, some of us fell into those things. But this is the good news is verse 11. Verse 11 says, And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So we want to rejoice that we've been delivered. We've been delivered. We don't need to focus on the things that we've done or not done or that people have done to us or are not done to us, okay? We need to understand that we've been delivered and now we're in the kingdom of God and we are the temple of the living God. And as His temple, what's going on? What is being transformed? Look at verse 17. And I am skipping a few things on purpose. We'll get to them maybe. Or you can read it later. Please don't do it now. Stick with me. Verse 17. 
But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. How does that make, how do you respond knowing that you are joined to the Lord? You are one spirit with him. Christ lives in you. The same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. So literally, is there anything that should be holding you back? Is there anything that should over, be overcoming you? But we've all felt overcome. We've all, we've all fallen short and been overcome by things. Well, I think part of it is because we don't build one another up. We don't encourage one another. We don't look at the other going, it's okay. I know they're going to come out of this. They're going to come through this. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That means, it doesn't matter what Mr. Smithers has as a shortcoming, I have to take confidence that Christ in him is bigger than that, and he should be in the list of, I was. And sooner or later, he'll be able to say, I did, but now I don't. I used to, but now I'm not. Am I making sense here? And so it doesn't matter whether it's a little one of those that list or three out of the list or all out of the list. The point is, we don't have to stay there. We have been delivered. We have been set free. And we've been placed into the kingdom of God. And as a part of His temple, we are a part of His body on the earth. There's a reason we, we still have this earth suit. And the reason is what we want to begin to understand. The reasoning, and that's why I even made reference to look how important the Old Testament temple was to God. Look at, look at all the things. Look at the book of Nehemiah. They had to rebuild the entire walls around the city. Look at, go back and you read these things, that, that, what, how focused God was about His people, His temple, the Ark of the Covenant. Well, all those are types and pictures for us today. Those are there for our learning. Those are things that we should be learning about because they now, those promises, those suggestions, not suggestions, those promises have to do with us now. Because he's not abandoned his temple. He's, he's not abandoned it. And yet, okay, I want to try to stick to my notes so I get this out and calm, cool, collective. Go with me to Rome. Now, I just read to you uh, verse 17. Did I read that to you? But he who's joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Write this reference down. I'm going to read it really quick. Romans 8, 15 and through 17. Romans 8, 15 through 17. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again unto fear. See, you didn't receive that. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom you cry, Abba, Father. We're, we're gonna get, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig into that a little bit in the future here. That You receive the spirit of adoption by whom you cry, Daddy, Daddy, Abba, Father. There's so many things right there. We're, uh, our new person, the, the new us, should be crying out for the Lord. Should be crying out, yes, Father. Yes, Father. But I get it. We have broken relationships all around us. We have got to get into God's word and find out what God's word says about who the Father is and who we are to Him now and how that, how that transforms us. Abba, Father, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. See, I think we, we forget about this little line in here, if indeed we suffer with Him, and so we run away. We forget about this, but we like this heirs, we like this joint heirs, we like to, so think of it this way. All of us would not mind having to be, oh, dare I open up that can. See, I always try to think of somebody who's really rich and famous right here. Because if you talk about money, you usually get everybody in the same packet. Because money, money messes with a lot of us, right? So what if you found out, oh, guess what? You really are Donald Trump's son or daughter. Now, you just got yourself an access to a whole lot of money. But what about all the headache he gets? What about all the suffering he gets? What about all the other stuff that comes with that package now? 
Now, now see, if Don, Donald Trump is, I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but compared to God, you know, we can't get our hands far enough apart because he's just a man, okay? But if you were related to someone like that, pick, pick a different famous person. I, I don't keep up with them very much, so I don't know who ought to throw out there as far as names. But I promise you, with that name, with those people, come some form of persecution, okay? And what has the church done? Well, we don't want to be linked to them because they're, they're, they're... Paul writes over and over in here about his persecution. And, and he says he takes it with joy. And he's a part of the body of Christ. Mm, I see we, 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 don't, we haven't connected all this. Hallelujah. Let me help you in this way. How many of y'all remember Jeremiah 29, 11? It is one of everybody's favorite verses. 29, 11, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. I think we have it coming. If not, I can get to verse 13 because that's the part we always forget anyway. We have Jeremiah 29, 11. I, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, plans to give you hell, um, a, a future and a hope. And then verse 12. I'm going to pull it on mine. I wasn't going to go here, so I didn't give her, but I can see. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Jeremiah. Here, she got it for me. Jeremiah 29, 12. Can you go back one or no? Oh, this right here. And you shall call upon me, and yes, you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Do you realize the, the master of the universe just said he would hearken unto you? Do you realize the master of the universe said you're going to pray and he's going to hear you? The king of kings and lord of lords says you, he can pray that you're going to go and pray unto him and he will hear you and he, and he will deliver you. Now, verse 13, if you will. Verse 13. Verse 13. It's coming. Computer's having fun this morning. Jeremiah 29, 13. Let me read it. And you, have, and you will seek me and find me. Now here's the part. When you search for me with all your heart. You will, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. How much of our heart do we seek God? How much of our heart do we really seek God? Well, here's the thing. I believe that the, the awakening is happening. The people of God, they're stirring. God has put a hunger and thirst in our hearts for Him, for His Word. And so the smallest sin is going to seem like great rebellion because the Holy Spirit's going to be quick to go, you don't need to do that. You don't need to hear that. You don't need to do that. You don't need to go there. You don't need to let that in your heart because the transformation, we're beginning to see that we're a part of something bigger. We've always wanted to be a part of something bigger and it's been right here, but we've been afraid to talk about it. The churches have been afraid to, to look at it and, and honestly dig in and find out what it's talking about. And I'll tell you why. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Look at verse 20, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm going to start in verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? See, we like that on Sunday morning, right? Don't, don't shout me down now. We like it on Sunday morning. But how much of this do we like on Monday or Tuesday or Thursday or Friday night? How much of this do we like? See, we all like it on Wednesday night because we're circling back around and we're going to Bible study. So we like it on Sunday morning. How many of us like it on Monday night during football season? See, and I'm not against football season. I'm not against football. How much, of, how much of this do we like when we go to work to a place we don't even enjoy? See, that's a different time, different message. Listen, or do you not know? There's the problem. Most of us don't really know 
What it means that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God. You have a gift. This is why in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 it says that we, are, we have in this vessel a hidden treasure. We have this treasure hidden in earthen vessels. It's called the Spirit of God. It's called the Spirit of God. And so that links us to something bigger. The body of Christ is on the earth to, to be like Jesus. See, we like that scripture, Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. Verse 29 says what the purpose is. That we would be conformed into the image of His dear Son. John 17 says that Jesus says, As you sent me, I now have sent them. See, we're sent here, we're left here on an assignment with the, as, and being Christ in us, the temple of God, and us being a part of the body of Christ. And the reason we don't like to talk about the body of Christ is because we don't like what the body of our flesh often is doing. We don't like what our body is tempted to do, what it's been caught up in doing, what it's been tricked to doing. What we've been led astray in. See, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What, what verse did I read? Oh, I've already read, it. read 19. I skipped 18. How dare me? How, how dare, well, let's go to 20 so you feel really good. Look at verse 20. For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Now, we got that one down. In your spirit, oh yeah, I'm, I'm righteous and truly holy. I, I'm, I've been delivered. I'm, re, I'm redeemed. I'm, 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 yeah, I get it. But what about our body? Because what we do in our body does matter. Because what we do in our body affects other people. What we do with our body goes across the body of Christ as well. So why is it? And, and so I'll use me so none of you get mad. People, number one reason, people don't go to church. The one I hear the most, bunch of hypocrites there. Bunch of hypocrites. I ain't going, bunch of hypocrites. Well, you know what? I'm sorry. There were no hypocrites in this house until I showed up. Because your standard of a hypocrite, you think I have to do it all perfect. I live in a glass house every day. And those of you who know me know I have not arrived. But that doesn't mean I get to quit. That doesn't mean I have to stop. That doesn't mean I have to stop living because what I do makes a difference. What you do makes a difference. We have to learn how to, here's a big key. And, and I don't know, we're, we're not going to get there today, but I'll, I'll help you the most when we can learn to forgive. Forgive one another, forgive yourself, forgive your friends, and forgive your enemies. When was the last time we literally prayed for those who purposely did us wrong? When was the last time? When was the last time we were mocked or ridiculed and we literally stopped and blessed them? You want to change your world? See, we get caught up a lot. It's easy to give to somebody who doesn't have anything. And they're... they're, they're they're like, like Mike shared, he was down in the bottom. He knew nothing. He had no money. He, he was broke over and over and over again because it made bad decisions, done some stupid stuff. And I, I just know because that's how all of us are. I, I don't know any details. So don't ask me. You want to know, you got to ask him. But he said in his out loud that he was broke, beyond broke. And yet when he got things right in his heart and began to follow the Lord, he began to have so that he could give away. And he began to give away. See, if you have a boss that frustrates you, when was the last time you blessed your boss? Besides, not just in word, yeah, pray for them, bless them. But what about finding something out that they need and make sure they have it? Oh, what about in the body of Christ? See, we'll get there. Oh, we'll get there. Oh, hallelujah. All right. See, it's... For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Go back up to verse, now we read 9 and 10. Look at verse 12. 
Look at 1 Corinthians 6.12. It's a good place to kind of jump in. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Maybe you can eat all the brownies you want, but you got to choose not to be under the power of the brownie. Because round is a shape, but it's not the most desirable shape. I'm talking about me. I don't know what y'all heard. I was talking about my sin. I'm in my glass house. I'll be the first one to admit, man, a brownie tempts me. Chocolate chip cookies. My kids know. You want dad's attention? Just get him some chocolate chip cookies. You know? Ice cream, cookies, all that stuff. It's easy. But I have to decide that I'm not going to be brought under the power of any. See, I can eat what I want, but I will pay the consequences for doing it. I'm trying to keep this simple, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to keep it out of your business because, see, that's where the disconnect. That's when people start turning on. Oh, how dare you talk about my problem? Well, because they're all the same. But they're affecting the body of Christ. They're affecting the body. People, that's why... All right, keep going. The Bible says it best. Food is, oh yeah, look at that. Verse 13, food is for the stomach and stomach for food. But God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. Are you kidding me right now? The body is not for what? Fornication? Fornication? Where, when did they put that in there? Now, the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And yet the whole culture is telling it doesn't matter. There's TV shows about, what, um, what is it? Just um, You meet somebody, you're attracted to them, you go in and have sexual relationship with them, and it's no big deal. Why do you think the body of Christ is so messed up? Because we've fallen into these traps. We've, following it, we've fallen into these mindsets. We've followed into to these things that we don't think it's important. He just said, our body is the temple of the living God. Our body is the temple of the living God. And it's not for immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. And the Lord for the body. He came to live within us. John 17 and John 14 talk about how we're to be one with Him. We're to be one with Him so much that when people see us, they see Jesus. They hear Jesus. And that doesn't mean you go around and quote a bunch of scripture. That puts a new meaning to blessed to be a blessing. That puts a new meaning to being able to literally help somebody in their need. Not because they, they've told you what their need is, but because the Spirit of God has told, them, told you what their need is. Because you can see their need because you used to be in that position. And you don't have to worry about that anymore. But now you know their pain and now you can help them out of their position. And it doesn't mean you stirring up a bunch of stuff. It simply means Christ lives in you and he will give you that word of wisdom. He will give you that word of knowledge. He will move through you with those gifts of healings. Those gifts of, of miracles. See, we like these gifts. But what, remember what we said, why people don't come to a church? Because a bunch of hypocrites? Well, because they see you on Monday when the boss tells you to do something and you whine, murmur, and complain. Now, I got some bad news for you. There's a whole lot of things happening in, in the Old Testament about murmuring and complaining. Every time I turn around, those hypocrites... Were murmuring and complaining. No, they were the people of God. And they were choosing not to follow God. They were choosing not to hear from God. But they were God's people. God took them up to the, to the line and said, go get that land. They're the ones that said, oh, we can't. There's giants over there. There's giants over there. He says, I know. I, go kill them. 
Without me, you can do nothing, but I'm going with you. I've already given them into your hand. And see, we don't connect that to our everyday lives. We don't connect that to when we're at work and the boss is asking us to do something that needs to be done. I'm not talking about if it's immoral. If it's immoral, you better figure out how to, how to make a stand. But you have to do it in, in love. Okay? The sinner sin, deal with it. But there's a whole lot of people watching you. There's a whole lot of people watching what you do. And they see and they know the truth. I don't want us to be those. Be quick to repent. Be quick to, to be like, oh yeah, that wasn't right. I shouldn't have done that. I should not have argued with the boss. He is the boss. Be quick to go, yes, sir. See, that's been removed from our... And why do you think? You can't say, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no. All coming back to all the sex stuff. Oh, I don't know. Is there a connection? See, if we can destroy the morality, if we can destroy the, 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 the institution of marriage, if we can destroy people's minds on, on what truth is, that God made man and woman, and He made them after His image, and He made them so that we could dwell in, He could dwell in us, and we're here on this assignment. Oh, yeah. Verse 15 of 1 Corinthians 6, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take a member of Christ and make it a member of a harlot? Certainly not. Do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. Here's the one we liked earlier, right after he talks about that. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality and every sin that man does outside the body. But he who commits, commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that you are the temple of the living God? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit, sorry. Who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not to your own, for you were bought with a price. You were bought with a price. Oh, hallelujah. We're to glorify God. We're to give Him praise. We're to do this. Now, I'm going to try to, try to feel it let you feel some love. I want you to go with me to Galatians chapter 6. I know we've gotten all up in your business, gotten all up in your life, but did you come to learn? Did you come to get transformed? Did you come so that when you go out in the world, you're not one of them, but you're part of the body of Christ? See, when we begin to understand that this is bigger than we are, this is bigger than what's going on here, and we begin to join into that, our whole life gets transformed. When we begin to see, in Galatians chapter 6, very familiar, verse, um, verse 7, I'm going to start. I only told them 9 and 10. I'm going to read. I'm going to start in 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that will he also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of his flesh reap corruption. So if I spend all my time just making my flesh feel good, my flesh will reap corruption. Did, I, did you hear what I just said? I didn't put anybody under a bus in any particular way, but if it helps you, if all I get up and think about what will I eat, what will I drink, where will I go, there's where my life will be. Galatia, Matthew chapter 6 said, don't worry about those things. Don't worry about them. So if we're not supposed to worry about them, what are we supposed to be thinking about? What are we supposed to be focusing on? What are we supposed to be doing with our time? I'll challenge you in this way. How many of y'all know what you're going to eat for lunch? You're like, I don't know, but you better hurry up, Pastor, because we're all getting hungry. Some of you, if I say green chili, sounds great, right? How much thought did you put into that green chili? Some of you have lunch waiting for you in a crock pot at home. Some of you or have it waiting for you at the double S, ready to go and get something to eat. All right? Whatever it is, you've put thought process into it. So let me ask you this. What are you going to eat tonight 
of the, of the Word of God? What are you going to eat of the things of God? What are you going to do in the kingdom of God tomorrow? We're all going to go to work, some way, shape, or form or another. We're all going to go somewhere and be with other people. And that may be your assignment. It's good that we work. We're called to work. We're made to work. It's not a bad word. I know it's a bad word in our culture today. But it's not a bad word. We're made to work. Now, I think we ought to be able to enjoy our work. I think we ought to be, I mean, we're gifted. So if we're not in our gifting, then maybe we're in the wrong seat on the bus. But look at this. For he who sows to his flesh will of his flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. That, that's talking about knowing God. John, John 17, 3. Everlasting life. Look at verse 9. Let us not grow weary while doing good. Are you with me? Let us not grow weary when doing good. While doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Now we all like that. Look at this next verse. Because I think a lot of us leave that out. Therefore, remember what therefore means. Stop and see what is there for. He just said, do not grow weary while doing good. Because if you continue to do good, you will reap the reward. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those who are of the household of faith. So I want you to think about this. When was the last time you purposely helped, did good to someone in the household of faith? Now, I get it. It's easy. It's easy for us. It's easy for me even in this community because we, we live in a drive through community. People come and people go. And even Jesus said, you will always have the poor among you. So I'm not taking away from giving to the poor. I'm not trying to take away from that. But do you realize that as the body of Christ, there are people among us who just need our help? Okay, I'll, I'll think of it this way. The nose. Don't worry, I'm not going to the, my favorite part of this. But the nose. What have you done to help your nose? My hands have to help my nose. My nose is a very important part of the body of Christ. If my nose isn't working, I get clogged up. I'll sound funny. I may have stuff running out my nose. So my hands have to literally go and do something to help my nose. You following me? I have to go get a Kleenex and blow my nose. I have to go into the bathroom and pick a booger out so I can breathe. I don't know. How, see, I got everybody to laugh, but there you go. But guess what? If my hand doesn't cooperate with the rest of the body and help my nose in its time of need, Houston, we have a problem. Am I making sense? So this just said, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all. So we're not excluding, but today I'm trying to help you understand you are a part of the body of Christ. The things you do and the things you don't do really do matter. How you help others. How do you help them in the body? How do you help those in your body? How do you help those around you? Are you focused? See, because God is adding. If you go back and you look in Acts, He added to the church daily. And how did He add? Because they were doing in the word they were hearing the word of God they were learning what the word of God said about them they were eating together they were fellowshipping they were working they were doing life together and they were praying together and everybody was growing we all have an assignment and we have to start with it here See, we would love for more words of wisdom and prophecies and tongues and interpretations as we gather on Sunday morning. But let me just give you a little hint. 
That stuff should be happening all the time, every day in your life. And the only reason it's not is on us. It's on us. See, you expect it from me if you call me up as your pastor and you want my help. You want me to have that word of wisdom. You want me to have that word of knowledge. You want me to have something, right? Well, you said, well, yeah, that's what we pay you for. Nope. Nope. It's not right. You pay me because I got to eat. I got to have a house. I got to take care of my family. I'm anointed and called by God to fellowship with God, to walk with God, to hear from God, and to have such a close connection with Him that no matter who comes into my presence, if I'll lean in and listen, He'll tell me what to say. If they're an unbeliever, one focus. Do you know Jesus? Will you come to Jesus? Will you accept the, the, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ? Will you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Will you make Him Lord? To a believer, it varies. We don't know where they're struggling, but the Holy Spirit can show us. He can show us. They might need 20 bucks. They might need... I, he paid two mortgages in his own. It sounds like a, a bad love story that somebody wrote. I hope you, I mean, well, now. <laughs> I, I know he's been redeemed now. He's got a wonderful wife. Listen, we're on an assignment this week. Go back. Look through these scriptures. Go back. Listen to this again if you have to. Look at those scriptures and look at them in the light of you are the temple of the living God. God lives in you. And that should make a difference in anything and everything we say and do. But it doesn't happen overnight, ladies and gentlemen. We all know. When none of us have arrived. So leave room for repentance. Leave room for adjustment. Leave room for somebody to go, yep, I used to do that. You know, it's encouraging to see the growth that's happening around us. It's encouraging to see lives changing. Lives turning around. Weeks ago, they did stupid, and now they've done less stupid. That means they're doing things right. That's exciting. We should, we should rejoice in that. We should, we should enjoy that, those testimonies. We should enjoy that growth. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand. Did you learn anything? All right. Thank you, Lord. Let's, let's pray. Thank you, Father for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for what you're doing in our midst. Thank you for your word. And right now, Father, I pray if anybody here, they do not know you as their Lord and Savior, if they do not know you personally, that today they would cry out, accept you as their Lord. Accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That they would believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. I pray that they would follow up and respond with water baptism. I pray, Father, if anybody's here that has not received you in the infilling of your Holy Spirit, that we would seek and find you. That they would receive you. They would understand, know you. I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, hug somebody's neck, encourage them, bless them, do good to them. Hallelujah.